I want to say that if you want to have some benefits here on the channel and help with the continuation of the Dragon Ball Hakai manga, you can do so through our Patreon. For a very small price, you can already have some exclusive benefits here on the channel, and you will also collaborate for the continuation of Goku's story as a god of destruction. Our Patreon link is in the video description, go check it out later to find out more. The year is 784. All the gods of destruction, gods of creation, and angels are summoned to the meeting in the Grand Zeno's palace. The Zenos are apparently very excited and anxious, which causes curiosity in the gods. Once all the deities are present, Daishinkan thanks all of them for their presence. Beerus, very curious, asks the high priest for the reason for them sudden meeting. Daishinkan explains, Since the last tournament of power, all the gods have been very impressed by the incredible power of the Super Dragon Balls. And then a question started to be asked. Why do the Super Dragon Balls need to be in Universe 6 and 7? Why are only the gods of these universes privileged to have such powerful relics on their territory? This situation caused many doubts, protested, and complaints among all the gods. Beerus, very angry, says, addressing the other gods, I knew this would happen. You are all envious. But Quintella immediately replies, Of course, an idiot god that neither you can nor deserves to have these precious relics in your universe, and neither does Champa. There are gods far more qualified than you to take care of the orbs. Champa joins in the discussion and says, And you think you're worthy of something, Quintella? Your universe isn't doing too well either. What makes you think you're better than me and Beerus at guarding the orbs? At this point, Jin, enjoying Champa's questioning, agrees. Champa is right. In that case, we should leave the orbs in a universe, ruled by a god who has an extremely exemplary job. I don't want to brag, but I think I'm the best suited for the role, said Jin. But Likir protests. Likir says, And why does it have to be you, Jin? You weren't the only one who was above the mortal average. But Daishin consoles the gods, saying, Gentlemen, please don't be rude of having the almighty Zeno witness such futile discussions. After these words from Daishinkan, the gods calmed down and shut up, fearing that the Zenos would punish them in some way. After that, Daishinkan goes on to explain the situation. Ever since these complaints from the gods started, the Zenos and I have been thinking of a way to deal with this situation as fairly as possible. The great Zeno loved the experience of the last tournament of power, and he has been very much looking forward to the next competition. Taking all this into consideration, we decided to hold a new tournament of power. But this time, the winner of the tournament will not only have the right to have a wish granted by the Dragon Balls, but the winning universe will have the orbs from now on. All the gods are extremely worried upon hearing that, and many doubts arise among them. The first to ask a question is Vermoth, and he asks if, again, all universes are at risk of being erased. But Daishinkan explains that no, this time, the universes will not be erased. The only thing that will happen to the losing universe is that won't be able to have the Super Dragon Balls. However, there are still some ways for the universe to be erased during this tournament, and this will happen if a universe refuses to participate in the competition. And also, if any participant in the universe withdraws in the middle of the competition. Those are the only two ways a universe can be erased during this new tournament of power. After hearing the information, the gods calm down. Theoretically, it's a competition where there's nothing to lose, only to gain. They may have a chance to have the Super Dragon Balls, and if they lose, there will be no punishment. Looks good. But not for Beerus and Champa, who are very angry about it. They already have the Super Dragon Balls in their universe, so what do they have to gain from this competition? They only have to lose. But of course, despite what they thought, neither of them dared to tell the Xenos and Daishinkan. Daishinkan continued to give information, saying, This tournament will have very different rules from previous tournaments. But we'll explain what's new when all participants are gathered. But what you gods need to know now is that this competition will be held in a different arena, which will be a planet that will be created especially for this event. Unfortunately, at the time of the Tournament of Power, the arena was built, suffered serious damage, and was not able to withstand the power of the participants. So this time, I intend to create an even stronger place. For this, I will want the help of all the gods of creation, and together we will work for this place. I estimate this place will take a day to complete, so you have that time to select your participants. But this time, each universe won't have 10 participants, only 5. Well, that's the information needed now. The rest of the news will be said before the tournament starts. With the exception of the Supreme Kais, you are all dismissed. Daishinkan makes a movement with his arms, and then all the gods of destruction and angels disappear from that place. Now at Universe 7's Planet of Destruction, the planet is shaking, and several waves of impacts are seen flying across the sky. 
Goku, Vegeta, and Brawly are in the middle of a fight, a triple fight. The three Saiyans fly quickly through the sky, engaging a sequence of blows. Vegeta lands an attack on Goku, but then Brawly lands an attack on Vegeta, and then Brawly himself is hit by Goku's attack. After landing an attack on Brawly, Goku launches a Kamehameha at the bigger Saiyan who is hit and carried by the energy wave until it hits a mountain on the planet, and soon after a large explosion occurs. Vegeta takes this opportunity to charge Goku with lots of attacks. Goku is cornered by Vegeta's attacks and takes many hits. Vegeta finishes the sequence of attacks by touching his hands to Goku's abdomen and blasting an energy attack at the rival, launching Goku towards the ground. Brawly flies towards Vegeta and they fight. Vegeta uses his fighting skills to defend himself and counterattack Brawly, who at first is at a disadvantage, but he begins to adapt to Vegeta's fighting style and has the upper hand against the Saiyan Prince. Seeing that he was at a disadvantage, Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan and he again has the upper hand on Brawly, landing many hits on him. Goku returns to the combat, also transforming into a Super Saiyan, and the three continue exchanging blows, but Brawly is at a complete disadvantage. After receiving a lot of hits and getting very frustrated at not being able to touch the two other Saiyans, Brawly gets very angry, and they start emanating a strange energy, and his eyes turn yellow. After that, he charges at Goku and Vegeta and starts to hit several attacks on the Super Saiyans. Goku, despite receiving many attacks from Brawly, gets very excited and says, All right, Brawly, unleash your power. But Vegeta, unlike Goku, gets very angry after receiving so many attacks. He says, Don't think you're winning. Vegeta transforms into Super Saiyan 2 and charges at Brawly, attacking the larger Saiyan with many attacks. But within seconds, Brawly adapts to Vegeta's power and again manages to defend himself and counterattack the prince, who is thrown far away by a powerful attack from Brawly. Goku, extremely excited about Brawly's power, says, Let's see how you handle the next level. Goku concentrates his power and then the entire planet starts to shape as his hair starts to grow. It's Super Saiyan 3! After transforming, Goku restarts the fight with Brawly and just like with Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, Brawly starts out at a disadvantage, but he quickly increases his power according to Goku's level and the two fight at the same level until Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan God, yells at them as he prepares his energy attack. Vegeta says, Don't ignore me, you worms! Vegeta launches an attack at the two, surprising them both. A massive explosion ensues, and Goku and Brawly fall from the sky towards the ground. Vegeta, taking this chance, flies towards Brawly and lands many blows on him, finishing with an attack that sends him flying far away. And after that, he goes towards Goku and pushes the rival with many attacks, and ends the sequence of blows, throwing Goku to the ground. Goku complains. Goku says, Calm down, Vegeta. You don't have to take this so seriously. But the prince already transforming into Super Saiyan Blue replies, Don't be an idiot. Every fight is serious. Goku stands up, then reverts to his base form to later transform into Super Saiyan Blue as well. After doing so, he says, All right then, let's level up. Goku and Vegeta fly towards each other to stop and clash their attacks, after which they begin an intense exchange of super strong and super fast blows. At one point, the two simultaneously land an attack on each other that knocks them both away, and then Vegeta prepares a garlic gun with Goku preparing a Kamehameha. They fire the attack at the same time and the two energy waves collide. Both attacks remain in the center. The power is equal. Goku yells, Kaioken, increase 20 times! At that moment, Goku's Kamehameha quickly advances against Vegeta's garlic gun. But the prince, seeing that he would be swallowed by Goku's attack, shouts, You won't win, Kakarot! Vegeta emanates all the power of the Super Saiyan Blue, switching to the Super Saiyan Blue evolution, and at that moment he knocks the energy away from Goku, and both attacks are equal again. But Vegeta yells, I'm not done yet. And the Prince of Saiyans emanates energy again, and this time the blue aura of the Super Saiyan gives way to purple energy. It's Ultra Ego. At that moment, Vegeta's energy wave grows even bigger and goes towards Goku, who immediately activates Ultra Instinct, which again equalizes the energies. After doing so, Goku yells, Let's find out who's the most powerful Vegeta. The rival agrees. Come on, Kakarot! The two energy waves explode, causing a massive wave of impact and destruction on the planet. But neither is affected by all the exploding power, and they both rush towards each other to clash their attacks. However, they stop when they see a large pillar of energy rising on the horizon, along with a scream that echoes across the planet. It's Brawly, who has turned into a Super Saiyan. The legendary warrior comes flying out of his green-colored energy, and then he flies towards Goku and Vegeta. But before reaching the two opponents, Brawly stops. And then he goes back to base form, which leaves Goku and Vegeta confused. The three stop the fight. Goku and Vegeta also return to base form. 
Goku tells Brawly that he should keep the transformation as he won't be able to fight at the same level as they are in base form. But Brawly refuses, and he remembers that when he transformed he caused great destruction on Earth and doesn't want to repeat that. But Vegeta says that the reason he is training is precisely to control his own powers, so he should take the risk. But they are interrupted when Beerus and Whis return to the planet, and Beerus calls them in for an urgent conversation. After a few minutes, Beerus and Whis explain everything to the three Saiyans. Goku is very excited about the news, but Vegeta and Brawly, not so much. Vegeta likes the idea of fighting powerful opponents, but he didn't like Zeno and Daishinkan's attitude of erasing the losing universes that time. Okay, the rules will be different now, but even so, he doesn't trust those guys at all. Brawly is different. He really doesn't like the idea of having to enter a weird competition to fight a bunch of weird people. But Beerus says that despite their wishes, they need to participate. Since if they don't have the required number of participants, Daishinkan and Zeno can understand that Universe 7 is refusing to participate, and then it will be erased. Goku says it will be fun. It'll be great to fight without the responsibility of having the entire universe erased in case he loses. They will literally be able to fight while having a fun. Beerus asks Goku who's going to be the other participants who will compete in the team. Goku thinks for a while, and at that moment, the strongest warriors he can think of are Gohan, Piccolo, and Frieza. Hearing Frieza's name, Vegeta and Brawly get angry. Vegeta says that this time they don't need Frieza, but Beerus disagrees. He thinks Frieza did an excellent job in the first tournament of power, so he should definitely be called up again. And then he asks Whis to look for Frieza. Whis immediately obeys and takes a good look at his staff, but something strange is happening. Frieza is nowhere in the universe. That surprises everyone. And Vegeta says he's definitely up to something bad. Beerus says they don't have time to be looking for Frieza, so they should immediately head to Earth in search of Gohan and Piccolo. Meanwhile, on planet Earth, Gohan and Piccolo train together in a place far from civilization. Both are in base form and Piccolo is wearing his heavy outfit. Gohan has a big disadvantage during the fight and Piccolo can easily block and deflect Gohan's attacks, as well as landing good counterattacks on the Saiyan. At one point, Piccolo lands an attack on Gohan that causes him a lot of pain and knocks him away. Gohan is a little frustrated and says, What humiliation! Even after wearing that heavy outfit, you still have a big advantage over me. But Piccolo replies, Of course, you again dropped out of training, so your power hasn't grown much. During the fight against the androids, you managed to awaken that new power that made you much more powerful. But the truth is that your base power has not yet increased. Gohan is a little embarrassed and says, It's true, Mr. Piccolo, but this time it will be different and I will get stronger. Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan, then charges at Piccolo. This time his attacks are more accurate and he even lands a few hits on the Namekian. But Piccolo still has the full advantage and in that moment lands a blow and sends Gohan violently crashing to the ground. Seeing that form was still not enough, Gohan transforms into Super Saiyan 2 and again attacks Piccolo. At this time, the Namekian is very pressured and is hit by several attacks from Gohan, but at one point, when he was about to be hit by an attack from Gohan, Piccolo surprises the Saiyan by getting rid of the heavy clothing and letting Gohan hit the clothing. After that, he goes to Gohan's back and increasing the size of his arms, holds the Saiyan and begins to strangle him. While suffocating Gohan, Piccolo scolds the disciple. What is it, Gohan? That's not all you've got. Gohan at that moment decides to fight seriously and after concentrating his power, explodes his ki with the aura of the ultimate form, forcing Piccolo's arms to release him. He then charges at his master at high speed and lands several blows on Piccolo, finishing with an attack that launches the Namekian away. After receiving these several blows from Gohan, Piccolo smiles and says, That's it. Now this fight is starting. Piccolo concentrates his energy that unleashes his potential, and then the combat resumes, with Piccolo and Gohan fighting at their fullest potential. The impact of the blows causes earthquakes at that location, and the ground begins to crack. At first, Piccolo has the upper hand against Gohan, but seeing that, the Saiyan unleashes even more power, and the ultimate form's aura is now surrounded by lightning. And from that moment on, Gohan has the upper hand, and Piccolo retreats, until the Namekian is thrown to the ground by a blow from Gohan. Piccolo smiles and says, Very well, Gohan, but my power isn't at the maximum level yet. Piccolo prepares to release more power, perhaps transform, but suddenly a tube of light descends from the sky. It's Whis who arrives with Beerus, Goku, Vegeta, and Brawly. 
Seeing those who have just arrived, Gohan and Piccolo return to their base form and go talk to them to understand what's going on. After a few minutes, Beerus and Whis explain the situation and Goku says that they need both of them to fight in this new tournament. Piccolo says that he will always be willing to fight for Earth and the universe. But Gohan is not that excited. He says that although he likes to have returned the training, he didn't want to have to do that. After all, he has other responsibilities. Gohan argues that maybe Majin Buu and Frieza could be good options. Beerus explains that they can't find Frieza anywhere in the universe, and Majin Buu, despite being powerful, doesn't have a very reliable intellect. Piccolo adds that Gohan is currently much stronger than Majin Buu, and is also much stronger than Frieza when they've seen him since the last time. Gohan sighs, he's not happy about it at all. But seeing no other option, he agrees and says that if they need him that much, he'll fight. After hearing this, Beerus is relieved. The Universe 7 team is ready, and this time it was much easier than the last time. Goku is very excited and wonders who will be the chosen warriors from the other universes. Meanwhile, in Universe 6, Hit, the legendary assassin, is following a target, and as he watches the target, a voice begins to speak in his mind. Hit immediately recognizes it. It's Vados' voice. The assassin asks the angel what it wants, and complains that he's in the middle of a job right now. Vados explains to him what's going on, and that he's been selected as one of the participants in the new Tournament of Power. Hit says he can't participate. He has a lot of work to do at the moment, and his schedule is very busy. She should contact him in approximately a year. But Vados insists that the universe needs him, and Champa will pay 10 times the pay for all these jobs combined. Faced with this proposal, Hit is very tempted, and says that everything is fine. He can postpone the other jobs for a day. After the assassin's answer, Vados thanks him and asks him to find her as soon as possible. Ending the conversation with the angel, Hit stops time for a moment and then delivers a killing blow to the target. The target drops dead, and no one around knows why. On planet Sadala, a fight takes place in the mountains. Kale is on the ground watching those who fight. And meanwhile, Kaba and Kalifla, transformed into Super Saiyan 2, cross the sky, clashing several, several blows. Both seem to be on the same power level, but Kalifla seems to take the fight more seriously and puts pressure on Kaba. The Saiyan's elite warrior says, Kaba, Miss Kalifla, I think you're taking this too seriously. It's just training. Kalifla replies, you idiot, how can you be so calm? It's been years since the Tournament of Power, and we still haven't reached Super Saiyan 3. Goku and Vegeta will laugh at us. After hearing this, Kaba becomes more reflective and then agrees. Kaba says, you're right. I promised Master Vegeta that I would get stronger. It would be shame if he saw me at this level. Miss Kalifla, let's fight with all our might. But suddenly they stop when they see someone arrive at the scene. It's Champa and Vados. Champa with a smile on his face says, It's good to know you're training because we're going to need it. Meanwhile, in Universe 11, Topo, Dispo, and General Carcera are on one of the planets in the universe, and around them there are many fallen soldiers. Clearly, a very intense battle took place there. Dispo complains, Damn, this war was very intense. Even we took many hours to get it over with. General Carceral adds, I expected that this planet was being used as a battleground for a war that involves two empires that dominates dozens of planets. That is, warriors from dozens of planets were accumulated here to battle. Of course, those who suffered the most are the poor inhabitants of this planet, which have nothing to do with this war, but suffer from foreigners fighting here. But now that we've dealt with the main armies that were fighting here, these warring empires won't be able to fight again anytime soon. And now our next step is to try to convince them to negotiate peace. Anyway, at least the people of this planet will have some peace for now. Topo Very Proud says, The Pride Trooper never rests. Let's continue to bring peace and justice to the entire universe. When Topo says this, they get very excited and do an awkward dance typical of this group. But they all are interrupted when they all receive a telepathic call from Margarita, the angel of Universe 11. Margarita explains the whole situation to them and says that five pride troopers need to be chosen immediately to participate in a new tournament of power. She asks Topo to select the members who will participate, but obviously he and Jiren need to be in the competition. Topo agrees but warns that Jiren hasn't shown up for work for a while. He is recluse in some part of the universe that no one else knows where he is. Margarita says that she and Vermont will deal with Jiren. Meanwhile, he selects the other three participants. On a completely isolated planet, far from any part of the universe, is Jiren. The most powerful warrior in Universe 11, he's in a meditation position, and he emanates a red aura from his body. Even with his key controlled, Jiren makes that entire planet shake with the concentration of his power. But he opens his eyes when he notices something, and then looks back, and he sees that Vermouth and Marcosita have just arrived on the planet. 
Bermoth greets Jiren. It's been a long time since they last saw each other. He asks what Jiren's been up to. The warrior replies that he's been looking for ways to increase his power as he discovered some weaknesses during the Tournament of Power. But he can't train in ordinary places as he raises his key too much, things can get destroyed. Taking a good look at Jiren, Wormoth realizes that he has indeed increases his power, and that's a good thing, because he needs Jiren's power again. And then he explains the whole situation. Jiren says he won't participate this time as he doesn't care where the Super Dragon Balls are. Last time he fought to protect the universe, but now the reason is too futile. Vermont asks Jiren if he still doesn't want to have a wish granted by the Super Dragon Balls. He says no. His thoughts have changed since the last tournament. That is, there's no reason for him to participate this time. But Vermont reminds Jiren that Goku will likely be in the competition, and that the Saiyan loves to fight. If Jiren doesn't go, Goku might think he's a coward and that he's embarrassed by the defeat he suffered the last time. Hearing this, Jiren gets very angry. He's not a coward, and he would never shy away from a fight over such a reason. But Vermont replies that Goku and the others might not think so. Imagine the shame that would be. Jiren, the one who is known as the most powerful mortal who surpasses the might of a god of destruction and the most powerful and proud warrior in Universe 11, running away from a fight because he lost last time. Jiren is very uncomfortable with that and worries about his reputation. He accepts to participate, but that's not all. In fact, he really wants to test his new level of power, as well as find out how strong Goku has become. After Jiren agrees to participate in the new tournament of power, Vermont is overjoyed and relieved. In Universe 9, Bergamo, Lavender, and Basil were reunited with the god of destruction, Sidra. The three savage warriors have just received the news that they are going to have to participate in the new tournament of power, and none of them are exactly happy. Bergamo, with an expression of sadness and shame, says that their participation in the last tournament was a complete shame, and their power compared to the other universes was very low. If they participate again, they're likely to be humiliated yet again. But Sidra says that this time it'll be different, and they have a better chance of winning as they have two surprise participants. Bergamo is curious about that and asks who it is. At that moment, Sidra asks the participants to come closer, and when he sees who it is, Bergamo is in for a big surprise. He just can't believe what he's seeing! The day the Daishinkan gave the universes to prepare was finally over. And then 24 hours later, all participants from all universes were preparing to leave. On planet Earth, Goku said goodbye to Chi-Chi and Goten. As usual, Chi-Chi complains a lot about Goku not staying at home. After all, he spent a lot of time away training. And now that he's back on the planet, he's been away for very little time. Goten has a different opinion. He thinks it's really cool that his father will fight in the tournament, and he says that in the future, he wants to participate too. At Capsule Corporation, Vegeta also says goodbye to his family. He tells Bulma that he will be coming home soon, orders Trunks to protect his mother and sister, and also says goodbye to Bra, who is now a very grumpy child. Gohan also says goodbye to his family. Videl worried tells him to be careful in the tournament and not to try too hard but Gohan tells her to stay calm. This tournament will be much less tense than the last one, and now for the losers who won't have their universes erased, and that means everyone will fight in a more friendly spirit. After saying these things to Videl, he says goodbye to Pan and tells her to try hard at school, but Pan says he also wants to say goodbye to Mr. Piccolo and asks to go see him too. Gohan smiles and agrees. In another location on the planet is Piccolo's house. The Namekian observes the arsenal of teddy bears in his house and looks at those toys. He smiles, and when Piccolo leaves the house, he sees Gohan, Videl, and Pan. Pan runs to hug the Namekian warrior, who returns the emotional hug. Pan asks Piccolo to promise that he will be careful and that he will also take care of her father. Piccolo agrees but tells her to promise to train hard, and so she does. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo meet, and Goku teleports to take them all to Beerus' planet. On the planet of destruction, Beerus and Whis are eagerly awaiting the warriors who are on Earth. The God of Destruction complains, Beerus. What do these idiots think they're doing? If we're late, the Great Zeno might get angry and wipe out the entire universe. While Beerus incessantly complains about the Earth Warriors being late, not far away, Brawly is with chi -Lai and Lemo. He's saying goodbye to his two friends. chi -Lai is very upset about that situation. Brawly is a peaceful man. It's not nice to force him to fight a bunch of thugs from another universe. But Lemo, to console the woman, says she should worry about these brutes, not Brawly. The Saiyan tells them not to worry. He's been training lately and is sure he will fight well. Furthermore, Goku and Vegeta will help him to control himself. But he makes one request. Chi Lai must have more chocolates to give him when he arrives. The woman promises that yes, she will get the chocolates. Shin, the Supreme Kai, arrives on the planet. He looks exhausted. Beerus is worried and asks what happened and if anything went wrong. 
The god of creation says no, he's just too tired. It was really a lot of work to create this new arena. Beerus is curious and asks what this arena is like, and also asks if Shin already knows what these new rules the Daishin Convention will be. But Shin says that he cannot reveal anything, but assures that the new rules are very problematic, and that for the warriors they have, they will even be catastrophic. Beerus is very worried and wonders what the rules are. At that moment, Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo arrive on the planet. Beerus scolds them, saying they're late, and then he calls Brawly. They must leave immediately. Brawly goes to them with Chi-Lai and Limo and asks Shin to leave them on Earth, because there Chi-Lai can get him more chocolate. Shin says that they can go there. After all, it will take less than 10 seconds. After leaving Chi-Lai and Limo on planet Earth, Shin took them all to the planet, built solely for the new Tournament of Power. Planet Arena, a planet created in the world of Void. This planet is extremely colossal, with a size that would easily surpass a hundred large planets. Everyone is amazed to see that planet, and even Beerus says that in so many years of life, he has never seen such a huge planet. Shin still, with a tired expression, says that all 12 Supreme Kais worked tirelessly to build it, and he had the help of the High Priest all along. It took a lot of work, but it was worth it. All the creation gods used their maximum power to make all the matter on that planet as resistant as possible, and even the High Priest collaborated in this. Everything on this planet was at least twice the size of Kachin Kachin, the material used to build the arena of Tournament of Power. And not only that, the planet is also very big. So even if they destroy the scenery, there are plenty of places for them to be destroyed. Seeing the grandeur of the place, Goku gets even more excited to fight. They go to the center of the planet where there is a place where all the gods, angels, and mortals are gathered to talk about the rules of the new tournament. When they arrive at this place, they find that they were the last to arrive, and everyone looks at them, which makes them very uncomfortable. Goku and the other participants on his team take a good look at all the mortals that will participate in the tournament. Basically, everyone is familiar that he has seen in the last tournament. But in Universe 9, something strange was happening. A participant who was not on this universe's team before was now. And seeing this participant, everyone in Universe 7 is in shock. Everyone yells at the same time, Frieza? Yes, the Emperor of Universe 7 is now joining the Universe 19. Beerus seeing Frieza says, Frieza, you bastard! This is why Whis couldn't find you in our universe. What do you think you're doing? Frieza with a fake smile on his face replies, Isn't it obvious? I decided to change universes, but I didn't come alone. When Frieza says he didn't move alone, another person approaches, and to everyone's surprise, that person belongs to the same race as Frieza. He introduces this unknown being. Meet Cooler, my big brother. Seeing this person named Cooler, everyone is very surprised. Does Frieza have an older brother? Where has he been all this time? Is he powerful? The only one not so surprised by this is Vegeta and Beerus, who apparently already knew of the existence of this person named Cooler. The conversation is interrupted when Daishinken, seeing that all the participants were there now, initiates the final meeting before the tournament begins. The High Priest says, Thank you all for coming. This is a very special day for the Great Zeno, and it is also a very important event for the Twelve Universes. The reason for all this is happening, I believe you already know, and you must already know the prize for winning the competition. In that case, now it's time to talk about the new rules, and I ask that you pay close attention. For starters, unlike the last tournament, which was a timed royal battle, this tournament will be different. It will not be a one-stage competition, but a multi-stage competition. At this point, Goku is already very surprised, and asks what the Daishinkan means by multi-stage competition. The High Priest explains that Zeno loved the last tournament of power, but back then, he thought that the tournament could have more variety. While it was very nice to watch, it would have been better if the competition didn't have the same rule all the time. With that in mind, they have now decided to make the tournament with many stages, each with different rules and circumstances. That way, the warriors will be tested in many ways, and the entertainment of those who watch will be much greater. Goku likes the idea, although he doesn't quite understand it, so he asks what the stages those will be. But the Daishinkan says that at the appropriate time, they will understand each of these stages. For now, they should understand the first stage, which is already complex enough. Goku is a little upset that he hasn't revealed everything now, but there's no way he can argue, so he just keeps quiet. The High Priest begins to explain. Daishinkan says, The first stage of this tournament will be a quest for the Dragon Balls. It will be as follows. All of you will receive a Dragon Ball and be transported to some region of this immense planet. And then each of you must return to the center of the planet with two orbs. Forty participants will participate in this first stage of the tournament, each with an orb in hand. But in the end, only twenty of you will manage to have two orbs and will be classified. Goku spoke, 
I get it. All we need to do is beat someone. Take that person's Dragon Ball, protect our own orb, and bring it to the center of the planet, right? It sounds pretty simple to me. When Goku says that, the Daishinkan smiles and says, Well then, allow me to make it difficult. What if I told you that the universe teams will be structured in pairs? This leaves everyone in the place very surprised. Goku asks what the High Priest means by that. The Daishinkan explains that, in fact, the teams that will participate in the first stage of the tournament will not be composed of 5 members, but 10. But this time, the 10 members that will compose of the teams will be participants of two universes. In short, each team will be formed by representatives from two different universes. Daishinkan also explains that the universes that were paired up are going to be the twin universes. This means that Universe 2 will be a duo of Universe 11, Universe 3 will be a duo of Universe 10, and so on. With this revelation, everyone's opinions are divided. Some like the idea, and some don't. Goku definitely likes the idea, and he says to Vegeta, Hey Vegeta, that means Hit and the other Saiyans are going to be our friends this time. Vegeta from a distance exchanges glances with Kaba. The Universe 6 Saiyan smiles, while the Universe 7 Saiyan keeps his usual grumpy expression. Goku looks at Hit and smiles, but the assassin, like Vegeta, remains serious. Beerus and Champa also exchange glances, but the two quickly look away. Daishinkan begins listing the teams. Daishinkan says, Eight universes will participate in this first phase, and the twin universes will form teams. This means that we will have four teams. They are Team 1, Universe 2 and 11, Team 2, Universe 3 and 10, Team 3, Universes 4 and 9, and Team 4, Universes 6 and 7. After that, Daishinkan points his hand up, and then a Dragon Ball appears in front of each participant. They all take the orbs. The High Priest says, These are decorative orbs, created by myself. These artifacts do not have magical powers, they are just being used as symbols. As I have already explained, each of you will start the competition with an orb, but you must take another orb from another participant and go to the center of the planet to pass to the next stage. Goku looks at his orb and realizes it has four stars. He asks Vegeta how many stars his orb has. The prince says it has four too. And then he realizes that Gohan, Piccolo and Brawly's orbs have the same number. And then he asks, Sir, can I ask you a question? Why are our Dragon Balls all four stars? The Daishinkan explains. All those who belong to the same team will have the orbs of the same number. In case you belong to Team 4, just like all the mortals in your universe and Universe 6, that means all of you will have orbs with four stars. Team 1 participants, who are the mortals of Universes 2 and 11, all have the orbs with one star, and so on. Vegeta asks if the numbering of these orbs will make any difference. Daishinkan praises Vegeta's question. It is indeed a good question, and then he explains. Yes, the numbering of each orb will make a big difference. For starters, all of you to advance to the next stage need to have an orb with your team number. That is, if you are number 4, you necessarily need a 4-star orb to qualify. But the second orb you obtain cannot have your team's numbering. This is so that no participant betrays an ally at the time of the tournament or simply takes advantage of the elimination of someone from the same team to qualify. That means, to pass, you will need an orb with the number of your team and an orb with the number of another team. Goku starts getting confused. Now it's starting to get complicated. I don't understand at all, said Goku. But the Daishinkan says that it might be complicated at first. But once he starts, he'll understand quickly. Taking a good look at everyone in that location, Beerus has one question. High Priest, if I ask a question, I'm not seeing the participants from Universes 1, 5, 8, and 12 here, the Daishinkan explains. Excellent question, Mr. Beerus. Well, as these four universes stand out in comparison to the others, always remaining above average, we decided to give the gods of this universe some advantages over the other universes. Basically, Universe 1, 5, 8, and 12 are already classified for the second stage without having to go through the first stage. Also, these four universes gain the advantage of having a participants, not mortals, these, the gods of destruction themselves. That is, Iwan, Arak, Likir, and Jin will represent their own universes in the second stage of the tournament. Upon hearing that information, all the gods and mortals present are completely shocked and desperate. Will the gods of destruction themselves fight mortals? This is absurd, but who would dare say that to the Daishinkan and the Zenos? Nobody. After clarifying all these things, the Daishinkan says, Now that the rules are explained, let's get started. The Daishinkan raises his hand and suddenly, all the mortals disappear from the place and are scattered across the immense planet. Team 4 made up of the participants from Universe 6 and 7. The teams are sent to a forest. At this point, they can finally talk about what's going on. Goku, still a little confused, says, I still don't understand all this very well. Everything was explained very quickly, but Vegeta scolds his rival. Shut up, Kakarot. Nobody has time to explain things to you. 
Piccolo agrees. Piccolo says, Vegeta is right. What we have to do now is think about our strategy to win. But Vegeta disagrees. Strategy? I don't have time for these things. I'll do things my own way. You do what you want. Vegeta flies away. Kaba worried says, Wait, Master Vegeta, we shouldn't be walking around alone. Kaba goes after Vegeta. Hit says, I also have my stuff to do. See you later. Hit goes away, and Goku yells for him. Hey, Hit, wait, let's fight a little. Goku goes after the assassin. After that, Piccolo sighs and says, Damn, these guys are hard-headed. They always act before they think. Cauliflower impatiently says, I agree with them. This strategizing thing is very boring. Kale, let's go find someone to beat up. But when Cauliflower looks at Kale, she sees that her friend and Brawly are staring at each other. They both look at each other in a way that seems to be hypnotized. Everyone is embarrassed seeing that scene. Cauliflower confused asks, Hmm, what's going on with them? Gohan also watches awkwardly theorizing, Well, I think they're two sides of the same coin, so it should be normal for them to be curious about each other. Piccolo also embarrassed says, I understand, but it's weird. Cauliflower without patience goes to them, takes them both by the arm and says, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but if you guys want to be together, then let's go together. Cauliflower flies away carrying Brawly and Kale by the arms. Gohan worried asks, Mr. Piccolo, should we let Brawly go alone with them? He could get out of control and that girl named Kale is also not very reliable when it comes to controlling her own instincts. Piccolo replies, Well, that Cauliflower girl knows how to handle Kale. As for Brawly, the only one who understands him well are Goku and Vegeta, and they're not here anymore. I don't think we're any better than Cauliflower to help him. Guess we'll have to rely on luck for this one. Piccolo looks around and sees that only he, Gohan, and Frost are left. Addressing Frost, the Namekian says, Aren't you going to go around like crazy too? Frost replies, No, I think I'll take a smarter approach this time. Piccolo smiles and then says with a tone of irony, Who would have thought you, the one I like least in the group, would be the one who would listen to what I say? Frost with the same tone of irony says, Don't tell me you are hurt from that fight. It's been a long time. Piccolo replies, No, I'm not the type of person to hold a grudge for that sort of thing. Now let's move forward towards the center of the planet. We'll likely encounter enemies on the way, and then we'll get the necessary orbs to advance. Enemies will likely attack as a group, so we need to protect each other. Are you in agreement? Gohan and Frost agree, and then they move forward. Some time passes, and then several explosions happen all over the planet. The participants finally meet, and the battle finally started. Hit is flying through a mountainous region when he looks back and sees that Goku is following him. The assassin from Universe 6 says, I'd rather be alone. Goku asks him, Hey Hit, could you fight me? Just a little. I've gotten a lot stronger and would like to measure our power now. Did you get stronger too? Please say yes. Hit refuses saying, Don't be an idiot. We're on the same team. It would be really stupid to spend all our energy fighting each other right now. Goku gets very upset with that answer and says, Damn, too bad. I really wanted to fight you. But Goku has another idea. And excitedly he says, Jiren is from another team, so I can look for him. But they stop talking when they notice something. And then three things come out of the rocks and try to attack them with surprise blows, but they dodge. After dodging the first attacks, they see that they're robots that were hidden inside the stones. Missing the first few attacks, the robots surround them. And then Paparoni appears. He was hiding in the rocks. Paparoni, a little frustrated, says, Damn it, I was sure our trap was perfect. Goku, not liking this dirty tactic, says that doing that kind of thing was not cool. If they wanted a fight, just ask. But Hit, with a different mindset, praises Paparoni and the robots for the trick. It was a good strategy, and if he and Goku were weaker warriors, they would surely have been defeated. Paparoni is grateful for Hit's praise, but says that one way or another, they will win. And then he orders. Paparoni says, Balaradar, Panchia, and Koitsukai, attack! The three robots head towards Goku and Hit, who take up their fighting stances. Vegeta and Kaba are also flying over a mountainous region, but not the same as Goku and Hit. Kaba follows Vegeta, who is a little annoyed by this. He says to the younger Saiyan, Vegeta says, Hey Kaba, I thought I said I wanted to be alone. But Universe 6's Saiyan replies, I'm sorry Mr. Vegeta, but I don't think it's wise for us to be alone. Enemies can attack in large groups, so we need to have someone watch our backs. Seeing that there was no point in arguing, Vegeta ends up giving in, and then says in agreement, All right, but try not to get in my way. Suddenly a laser shoots through the rocks and almost hits Vegeta, who narrowly dodges it. Who fires this attack was Frieza, who flew out of the middle of the rocks, but he's not alone. Cooler is with him. Seeing the enemies, Vegeta gets very angry. 
Vegeta says, Frieza, you bastard. I already expected all kinds of dirt for you, but why join another universe? Frieza, with a mischievous smile on his face, replies, Isn't it obvious? I want to become a god of destruction. That answer surprises Vegeta and Kaba, and then the Emperor explains, Sidra, Universe 9's god of destruction is a true failure. He doesn't have much respect among the gods, as he has the lowest grade among them all. And he's not very strong either. Because of that, I promised him that I would go to Universe 9 and help him plot something against Beerus. My intention was to team up with Cooler and kill him, but then came this excellent opportunity to get the Super Dragon Balls once again. Vegeta looks at Cooler and then says, Cooler, right? I've heard a lot about you. For a long time, you were a true terror in our universe. A warrior even more feared than Frieza and Cold. But from what I heard, you were betrayed by them and killed. And that was before I was born. How are you here? Cooler explains, I wasn't dead, just trapped. But Frieza decided to release me and make a deal. Of course I hate him and want to kill him, but because of what he and my father did to me, but what can I say? The advantages of this arrangement were greater than my hatred for Frieza. Frieza interrupts the conversation saying that they've already talked too much. Now it's time to fight. Vegeta agrees and warns Kaba to watch out for them. Kaba says that he already knows what Frieza is capable of. He suffered at the hands of this cursed being in the Tournament of Power, so he certainly won't let his guard down. The four warriors advance towards each other, and intense combat breaks out in those mountains. Brawly, Kale, and Cauliflower were flying through a forest. Brawly and Kale flew side by side, while Cauliflower led the way. Looking back to see the two of them, Cauliflower sees them both trying to talk. Brawly with a shy expression finally says something. He says his name. Kale with the same shy expression also says her name, and that it's a pleasure to meet him. Cauliflower seeing the scene is a little embarrassed too. She is embarrassed by their lack of social skills, but she is suddenly surprised when Napapa leaps out of the trees and grabs her in midair, taking her into the trees and destroying at least a dozen trees. Brawly and Kale are startled by that and stop flying immediately. At that moment, Maji Kayo and Meti Hope also jump out of the trees, and while Maji Kayo raises one of his arms and hits Brawly with a punch, Meti Hope also lands a hit on Kale. That way, the Saiyans are separated. Kalifla, after being hit by Napapa's blow, rubs her sore head. After that, she sees the big pink fighter staring at her. The Saiyan girl complains. Kalifla says, Damn it! You again? I thought I already taught you a lesson in the last tournament. But Napapa says with a very angry expression, Things won't be like that time. I'm gonna crush you this time. Meanwhile, Kale faces Metihope. She's scared and disgusted by the lobster-faced warrior. Metihope trying to scare Kale says, Hey little girl, this time that friend of yours won't help you. It's just me and you. The lobster man makes very ugly faces which scare Kale, who with great disgust and fear screams for Cauliflower. Meanwhile, Brawly faces Maji Kayo and advances to land a blow on his enemy, but Maji Kayo distorts his own body and counterattacks Brawly, who is very confused because of that man's weird ability. Piccolo, Gohan, and Frost are flying through a forest when suddenly Diem, a bird warrior, comes flying up and fires an energy attack on them. To dodge the attack, the three disperse. Taking advantage of this, Lubal jumps up out of the trees and lands an attack on Piccolo, who is thrown against a rock. After doing so, Lubal says, you were the one who defeated me that time. I'm here for my rematch. Piccolo, after getting up, smiles and says, Well, some people never learn. Gohan yells for Piccolo and thinks about going to help him, but suddenly twisted images of someone appear before him, and Gohan is hit by an attack. Seeing who it is, Gohan recognizes his opponent. It's Omni, a warrior he faced during the Tournament of Power. Seeing this man, Gohan smiles and says, It's a pleasure to see him again. Obni smiles too and says he enjoyed fighting him that time and would love to have his rematch. The two fly towards each other to start the fight. Frost, seeing that Gohan and Piccolo were already fighting, turns to Dio. Frost says, Well, it seems I have no choice but to face the weakest, but at least I won't have so much trouble. Upon hearing these words from the Universe 6 warrior, Diem gets very angry and says he will make him pay for those words. In the mountains, an intense battle takes place between Goku and Hit against the three powerful machines of Universe 3. Panchia, Bolatator, and Koitsukai attack the two warriors with all their might. But despite that, Goku and Hit are dealing very well against these three robots. Goku is fighting in Super Saiyan, and Hit clearly isn't using that much power either. In a few moments of fighting, the three robots are already seriously damaged. Seeing this, Goku suggests that they hand over the Dragon Balls and flee to continue fighting at another dime. Continuing this fight now makes no sense, but Paparoni says that this is not all the power of his creations. 
And so the three robots start a process of fusion. And then Bola Rator, Panchia, and Koitsukai become the super robot, Koichia Raider. Goku is very surprised. He had forgotten that they could do that. But then he smiles and says that at least the fight will be more fun that way. But hit things differently. For him, it's all a waste of time. Koichi Raider lunges for the attack and tries to land super strong blows on the Universe 7 and 6 fighters and also fires a lot of energy attacks at them. Because of the robot's strength, Goku and Hit avoid an exchange of direct hits but circle the robot landing many physical attacks and energy attacks which stun the creature until the two finally team up and fire two energy attacks at the robot which also fires an energy attack at them. The energy waves collide and for a while the attacks are a draw. But Goku increases his power to Super Saiyan 2, while Hit also increases his energy and thus the two together defeat Koichi Raider's energy, who is swallowed by their attacks and is torn apart. Paparoni seeing the triple robot fusion being destroyed like that screams in despair. Hit goes to his back and while pointing his hand at him threatens him ordering him to hand over the orbs. Each of them had an orb, which means that they had four. With that, almost half of the team four members could advance to the next stage. But then Paparoni yells that Universe 3 shouldn't be underestimated. And at the moment, he makes a gesture that makes Koichiya Raider's parts go to him. And so a new fusion begins. Aniraza is born. Goku remembers the trouble this creature caused in the Tournament of Power and tells Hit that he must be prepared. In another mountainous region, Vegeta and Kaba face Frieza and Cooler. Vegeta fights Golden Frieza in close Saiyan Blue and they both have a very close fight. Meanwhile, Kaba faces Cooler in Super Saiyan and the two also have a fierce fight. But even though their power level isn't that different, Cooler seems to have a bit of an advantage and lands more attacks on Kaba. Frieza's older brother says, You're a very powerful boy, but you're young and you don't seem to have as much combat experience as I do. This leaves you at a disadvantage. Cooler lands many attacks on Kaba, who after receiving so many hits, decides to transform into Super Saiyan 2, surprising his opponent. And after transforming, Kaba has a lot of advantage and lands a lot of attacks on Cooler and then he says, With that difference of power, your experience will not help. But Cooler is very angry by receiving so many blows and says, You brat, don't think that's all the power of the great Cooler. After saying that, Cooler starts his transformation and now he has a much wilder and more imposing appearance. The transformation surprises both Kaba and Vegeta. Cooler charges at Kaba and this time, he fights at the same level as Sadala Saiyan. While fighting Frieza, Vegeta is distracted by seeing the transformation and receives an attack from Frieza for it. The villain scolds Vegeta saying that if he pays attention to anything else, he would end up dying. Vegeta asks what that transformation is that Cooler has and Frieza explains that Cooler, in addition to all the power he had in the base form, had a transformation that increases his power even more. Basically, this form of Cooler is an evolution of their race's base power, just like the Golden Form. But it's obviously far from having the power of the Golden Form, since Cooler didn't train to get this transformation. This form appeared with the natural evolution of his power. After Frieza explains this, Vegeta deduces that if Cooler was powerful enough to have an extra transformation, that means he's naturally much more powerful than Frieza. Frieza confirms, Cooler is indeed more powerful than he naturally is, and this was the reason he and Cold betrayed Cooler in the past. Obviously now Cooler is still not as strong as he is, as Frieza has evolved a lot with great battles and training. But his older brother has an equally fast evolution ability, and if he goes through the same trainings as Frieza, he will become much more powerful than he is. Vegeta asks if that doesn't worry Frieza. He doesn't seem like the kind of person who would tolerate having someone more powerful around, especially an enemy from the past who wants revenge. Frieza says this is obviously a concern, but for now he has everything under control and will use Cooler for now. But Vegeta says that Frieza's ambition ends now and he's going to put an end to it. After the Prince of the Saiyans says this, the two fight even more intensely. Meanwhile, Brawly, Cauliflaw, and Kale was fighting against Metihope, Napapa, and Majikayo. Brawly tried to land many attacks on Majikayo, but he distorts his body in a way that confuses the Saiyan and counters Brawly with many attacks. In one moment, Majikayo distorts his own body to hold Brawly's body and also to suffocate him. Meanwhile, Medihope attacks Kale, who is scared of the ugly creature next to her. She attacks Medihope in the face, but just like he did in the Tournament of Power, he holds the warrior's hand. But this time, unlike what happened when they fought in the Tournament of Power, Kale is not only scared, but she starts to get very angry with him. And then, for him to release her, she transforms into a Super Saiyan, fending off the Universe 10 warrior while emanating a powerful aura of Ki. Medihope, after being pushed away by Kale, returns very angry to punch the Saiyan, 
But suddenly, all of Kale's muscles grow, and when he lands a punch on her, she doesn't even move, scaring the lobster warrior greatly. Seeing Kale's terrifying expression, with completely white eyes and an expression of madness, Mary Hope is extremely scared, and then, in a surprising act, begins begging for his life. He takes the dragon ball he has, leaves it at Kale's feet and just runs away. After the warrior leaves, Kale laughs. Actually, she was just pretending she was crazy to scare the opponent. Meanwhile, Cauliflower was fighting Napapa. She used Super Saiyan against him and has the full advantage in the fight. Cauliflower lands many attacks on the pink man and while humiliating him with her blow, she says, You're a disgrace. Your power hasn't grown at all since the Tournament of Power. Back then, I had a lot more trouble beating you. Now, Papa very angry yells at her not to underestimate him and then tries to grab her. But Cauliflower doesn't even move, which causes the man to despair. Then she says, How about I defeat you using the same move I used before? After saying that, Cauliflower lifts Napapa off the ground and then uses a blow that sends him headfirst into the ground, knocking the pig man out. Brawly was being strangled by Majikayo, who made fun of the Saiyan. Majikayo says, From your size, I thought you'd be a bigger challenge, but you're just a weakling. While losing all the oxygen, Brawly becomes dizzy and his vision becomes dim. In that moment, he remembers what Goku and Vegeta said to him as they trained on Beerus' planet. He can't be afraid to use his own power. At that moment, Brawly begins to concentrate energy, and the power of the Saiyan makes the whole forest tremble and surprises Majikayo, who feels every particle of his body vibrate with that intense energy. And then Brawly releases a huge amount of power at once, along with the Super Saiyan's aura, and the legendary warrior's energy makes Majikayo's body completely shatter. After that, Majikayo remakes his body and looks with great fear at the legendary Super Saiyan emanating power. Brawly's power was so intense that his opponent was completely paralyzed with fear. The Saiyan opens his mouth and then shoots a powerful wave of energy that upon reaching Majikayo carries him far away. After doing this, Brawly fell to his knees. He was losing control. At that moment, Kale and Cauliflower approach and Kale, still in her muscular form, approaches Brawly and touching the man's shoulder tells him that she knows how it feels, that hatred and fury seem to have the control. But if he thinks about what brings him comfort, joy and happiness, he will be able to regain consciousness. And upon hearing this, images of Lemo and Chi-Lai come to Brawly's mind. And at the moment, the rage-ridden Saiyan seemed to regain consciousness and then returns to his base form. As soon as Brawly does this, Kale and Cauliflower praise him, and the man thanks the girl who helped him. Piccolo and Lubalt exchange physical blows. Lubalt has the upper hand in exchanging punches, but Piccolo uses his other martial arts skills to counter his opponent. As the two exchange blows, Lubalt comments that Piccolo seems to have improved his martial arts skills. Piccolo also praises his opponent, saying that Lubalt has clearly trained too, but he won't win this fight. Piccolo steps away from Lubalt and fires several key balls at him, surrounding the opponent with dozens of key balls, and after doing so, he launches them all at once, causing a huge explosion. But this time, this technique didn't work. Lubalt defended himself with an energy shield, which surprises Piccolo. After doing so, the Universe 10 warrior leaps towards the Namekian and punches him in the face, sending Piccolo flying. Lubal says that obviously, he would prepare to defend himself from the technique that defeated him in the last tournament. It is disappointing for him that Piccolo thought he would beat him in the same way, but Piccolo smiles and says that he would never try to beat the same warrior in the same way. And after saying that, he tells Lubal to look at the ground. And when the warrior of Universe 10 does so, he sees that he's surrounded by small mines of energy, similar to what Goku did against Jiren. As soon as Lubal sees that he's surrounded by these things, he thinks about running away, but it's too late, and Piccolo makes all these tiny little energy mines explode, creating multiple explosions that defeat his opponent. Now Gohan faces Obni, who does everything he can to trick the Earth Saiyan with his after-image ability, but Gohan already knows how to deal with that ability. He lets Obni land an attack, so he knows his real location location and counter-attacks. Gohan praises his opponent. His punches are stronger and he's resisting the Saiyan's punches better, which means he's really trained a lot. Obni confirms, he really trained hard, and this time he will be the victor. As the fight continues, Gohan starts to have a disadvantage and realizing this, Obni smiles and says, Did you think you'd beat me the same way again? Last time you found out that receiving an attack from me, you would know my location and thus be able to counterattack. And also, at that time, you bet on my fatigue. And when I couldn't use my power anymore, you defeated me with a direct attack. But obviously, I thought of a way to deal with this tactic of yours. Your counterattack won't work anymore, since now every time I attack, I'm already waiting for your counterattack. So I avoid it. I also trained a lot to strengthen my body and have stronger attacks. So you won't be able to withstand as many attacks from me as before. 
And lastly, I've also trained my ability to spend less energy while I use it. So you won't be able to use my fatigue to your advantage like last time. While Obni was saying all these things, he hit many attacks on Gohan, who was already starting to get tired and injured. The Saiyan admits, You've really improved a lot. You're faster, stronger, and tougher. In addition, you're managing to use your special ability much more accurately. You completely destroyed my strategy. I won't be able to win fighting like last time. After hearing these words from Gohan, Obni says, Don't look so calm. You're finished. The Universe 10 warrior corners Gohan, then lands a blow that would likely defeat the Saiyan. But then Gohan completely disappears from his sight. It was a mirage. When Obni realizes the Universe 7 warrior is already behind him with a Kamehameha prepared, and then he fires the energy wave, completely engulfing the green man, who screams in pain and is completely defeated. After that, while Obni is on the ground, Gohan approaches and explains, I realize that the same strategy as before wouldn't work on you anymore. So I decided to let you gain confidence while using an afterimage to trick you. I figured you wouldn't expect me to use the same technique as you to win, and I took advantage of this surprise to land a definitive blow. After hearing this, Obni smiles and praises Gohan. It was a good strategy. He is completely defeated. After admitting defeat, Obni passes out and Gohan takes the Dragon Ball he carries. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Frost approach. Both have already beaten their opponents. Frost celebrates that they already have the orbs needed to get through, but Piccolo warns that they still have a long way to go to the center of the planet. And that just as important as getting the orbs is keeping these relics. On the way, other opponents will surely try to take the orbs, so they must be prepared. In another region of the planet, Vegeta and Frieza fought very intensely, but Frieza was starting to have an advantage against the Prince of the Saiyans. Vegeta notices that Frieza, during this time that he was away, has increased his powers. Vegeta annoyed says, Damn you, Frieza! Have you increased your powers again? The villain boasted, Exactly, my dear Vegeta. While I was with Kula, I trained my skills with him, and in this way I managed to increase my powers. But it wasn't just Frieza that surprised the Saiyans. Cooler also had an advantage against Kaba, who even in Super Saiyan 2 was getting more and more beaten up by the villain. Until in a moment of the fight, Cooler hits Kaba with a powerful laser release by his eyes. This attack seriously injures Kaba, and in addition to making the Saiyan lose his transformation, it also knocks him down. As Kaba falls, Cooler approaches him and grabs him around the neck, strangling the young Saiyan. Seeing Kaba being suffocated by Cooler, Vegeta immediately transforms into a Super Saiyan Blue evolution, and he takes advantage of the sudden increase in power to surprise Frieza, hitting many attacks on the villain and stunning him. And after doing so, Vegeta approaches Cooler, landing a kick that knocks him away from Kaba. After that, Kaba, lying on the ground, apologizes to Vegeta. He was again too weak and is causing problems for his master. Vegeta says that apologizing won't help. Now all he can do is keep quiet so that the wound doesn't get worse. He will take care of Cooler and Frieza by himself. At that moment, Cooler and Frieza were already side by side. Frieza, smiling, asked Vegeta if he really thinks he can handle the two of them together. Although the Saiyan surprised him with the sudden increase in power from the common blue form to the blue evolution form, the power of his golden form is currently not that different from the power of the blue evolution form. But Vegeta smiles. The Super Saiyan blue evolution form is no longer his most powerful form. Now he has another transformation that far surpasses the power of the Super Saiyan Blue. If Frieza and Cooler want it, he can show it. But upon hearing this, Frieza becomes more serious and tells Cooler that they better back off. Cooler doesn't like that idea. Why should they back off? Together they can defeat that Saiyan. They trained a lot and increased their powers a lot. They can win. Frieza says that they'll maybe beat Vegeta, even though he's using this supposedly more powerful form. But it's too early to start such a high-level battle. They should avoid using full power for now. So they'd better end this fight for now. Despite not liking the idea that much, Cooler decides to do as Frieza is saying, and they back off. Meanwhile, Goku and Hit are fighting Aniraza, the mighty giant from Universe 3. Aniraza tries to land his powerful attacks on the Universe 6 and 7 warriors, but the two, knowing they can't compete for strength against that titan, just dodge it while looking for gaps to attack. Aniraza, while trying to land punches and kicks on the two warriors, destroys the entire surrounding area. Goku yells at Hit, Hit! To win him, we need to destroy the thing in the center of his head! Hearing Goku's advice, Hit uses the time skip to move forward towards Aniraza's head. And it's only when the assassin is close to attacking that the giant notices him. But to Hit's surprise, Aniraza opens a fissure in space and time and punches the assassin, who is caught off guard and thrown away. Goku tries to take advantage of Aniraza's distraction and fires a Kamehameha at him. But the giant fires a wave of red energy from the crystal in the center of his head, nullifying Goku's attack. 
After doing this, he creates several portals and lands several punches in these portals. These punches are all teleported to Goku, who tries to dodge it, but is hit. After that, the giant creates a ball of red energy in his hand. And when he launches this energy towards Goku, the energy splits into many attacks, which go towards Goku and hit. The two need to move intensely to avoid being hit by the attacks and explosions. Seeing that it was difficult to approach alone, Hit says, Son Goku, we have to approach and attack at the same time. They advance and attack at the same time, trying to distract Aniraza and find a breach. But the monster enraged begins to emanate a large aura of energy and then shoots several energy balls everywhere, creating a series of explosions that completely destroy the whole place. Goku and Hit dodge many of these attacks, but are hit by others. As soon as it hits the two fighters, Aniraza rushes towards them to attack them. Goku, seeing that the giant monster was about to crush them with his foot, tells Hit to protect his eyes. And when the assassin does so, Goku uses the Taioken, blinding Aniraza. And as soon as the monster stops, Goku touches Hit and teleports, taking the two of them out of there and then to a place where they can stay hidden. Hit asks why Goku did that, and the Saiyan explains that if they keep fighting without a plan, they will be defeated by the monster. At the time of the Tournament of Power, it took six Universe 7 fighters to defeat Aniraza. That creature was tough. Goku says he could beat the monster if he used more energy, but he wanted to save his energy for now. So it would be nice if they could think of a smart way to handle the situation. Hit agrees with Goku, but attacking that monster was very difficult, as he seems to have no blind spots and is also capable of making attacks from multiple directions easily. Getting close to him to attack is very difficult, but he has an idea. It will probably only work once, so Goku needs to be prepared to land a definitive attack. Goku doesn't know what it is, but he trusts Hit's intelligence, so he just agrees. Aniraza, after regaining his sight, was launching energy attacks to all sides, destroying the entire area around him, looking for the two opponents. At that moment, Hit appeared, and hitting a punch in the air makes a purple energy go towards Aniraza, who uses an aura of energy to defend the attack. But Hit uses this as a distraction to use the time skip to punch the monster, who immediately reacts by emanating more energy and knocking Hit away. But even becoming hit by the monster's attack, the assassin smiles and says, It's over. I just needed to land one hit. Hit points his hand at Aniraza, and then the monster is surrounded by the assassin's energy. That was the cage of time. After paralyzing the giant, Hit yells, It won't be able to hold him for long. It's your chance, Son Goku. Goku appears next to Aniraza with the instant transmission. He is in Super Saiyan Blue and using the Kaioken, and he already has energy concentrated in his hands. Goku yells, Kamehameha! And then a great wave of energy hits the monster in the crystal in the center of its forehead. The crystal shatters and Aniraza is defeated. After Aniraza is defeated, the fusion is separated. Hit approaches them to collect everyone's Dragon Balls. However, to Hit and Goku's surprise, Bergamo, Lavender, and Basil suddenly approach them, landing an attack of both of them and pulling them away from the defeated participants. The three Universe 9 warriors were hiding just waiting for that fight to end so they could get the loser's orbs. Goku criticized them, this is a cowardly tactic, but the three beatsmen laugh at the statement, what matters is winning, the chosen tactics are irrelevant. And after saying that, the three flee. Goku, very angry, goes after them. Hit tells Goku to wait. Going after them like that is reckless, it's probably a trap. But before Hit follows Goku, the entire environment around him changes. And then he realizes he's in an illusion. From the shadows of that illusionary world emerges the image of Darkori, who says that Hit was caught in the illusion of her talismans. Seeing he has no choice, Hit makes his fighting stance to fight the woman. Goku chases Bergamo, Lavender, and Basil for a while, until they suddenly stop running and attack the Saiyan. They are in a volcano. Bergamo says that Goku is an idiot. They just wanted to separate him from Hit, and he did exactly what they wanted. But Goku smiles. He already knew what they wanted to do, but he just doesn't care. He can defeat them all by himself. The three beasts are irritated by the statement, Goku shouldn't underestimate them like that. The three attack the Saiyan at the same time. Goku starts out fighting in base form, but he has a hard time fighting, as they attack so intertwined. And not only that, they were stronger too. Goku praises his opponent, saying that he can feel in the blows of the three that they are stronger. Lavender, while attacking alongside his brothers, brags that they not only trained individually to become stronger, but also trained as a group to further improve teamwork. 
Goku says that in that case, he'll have to level up a bit, and then he transforms into a Super Saiyan. Bergamo recognizes this transformation as being Goku's weakest transformation, and it angers him. Is Goku still underestimating them? But the protagonist says he wants to feel their power and enjoy that fight. If they think they're strong enough to see his strongest transformations, they need to prove themselves. The three warriors of Universe 9 filled with fury attack Goku. Bergamo tries to cut the Saiyan with his claws. Basil launches strong kicks and Lavender fills his fists with poison and attacks. Goku skillfully fights them, using all the skills worthy of a martial arts master. But despite Goku fighting very well, the trio manages to land many hits on him. And in one moment, they manage to land an attack that launches Goku into the volcano. But a few seconds later, the protagonist comes out of the volcano. And now he emanates the aura of Super Saiyan 2. The trio smiles. It looks like Goku is taking them more seriously. Goku advances towards the three opponents, and this time, he is the one who presses the opponents. Goku lands a lot of attacks on all of them, and defends and dodges attacks more easily. As he beats the three up, he asks if they want him to go back to the other transformation. The trio gets even more furious and then unleash even more power. Bergamo, using the energy of Goku's attacks, begins to increase his size. Lavender puts even more poison in his hands, and Basil starts to emanate even more energy and covers his legs with energy so intense, it feels like fire. After increasing their power, the three wild men advance with even more fury. They attack Goku with all their might, launching a lot of energy attacks and also attempting a lot of physical attacks. Goku realizes that, in that way, they were able to match powers with the Super Saiyan 2. No, they were getting over it. At one point, Bergamo, Lavender, and Basil decide to end that fight. The trio and gets then they even team more up furious and, fire and then a unleash even more power. Wave. Goku, with no time to dodge, simply responds to the attack with a Kamehameha. But his energy is quickly overwhelmed by the energy of Universe 9's warriors. Despite this, Goku smiles and he says, I wanted to save my energy, but you're trying so hard that I'll go to the next level just out of respect for you. After saying that, while holding the Kamehameha, Goku increases the power of the Super Saiyan's aura, and then the whole place starts to shake, and the volcano itself erupts. Meanwhile, the Saiyan's hair grows longer, and the wave of energy coming out of his hands gets much bigger. The Kamehameha, which was once losing to the trio's triple attack, is now charging towards them. The three, desperate to see that they were losing, scream, and then are hit by a Kamehameha and are carried far away, completely disappearing from Goku's line of sight. After defeating the opponents, Goku returns to his base form, panting. He wonders if it was a good idea to have wasted energy this way to transform into Super Saiyan 3. He thinks he got more excited than he should have. At that moment, Goku realizes that he is stepping on that hot ground without the protection of Ki, and then he starts bouncing around comically while his feet are burned. Meanwhile, he remembers that he should have taken the Dragon Balls from the three, but he threw them so far away that he can't see them anymore. And since they're probably passed out, he can't feel their energy. He really is an idiot.